Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unmanned, latest Amazon patent hints at unusual use for UAV. Local governments may soon have some authority to regulate drones. And commercial drone operators can now access controlled airspace. Hello, I'm Laura Hudson. Welcome to the Aero News Network's Airborne Unmanned Program, a weekly news program covering all things unmanned in partnership with AUVSI, the Association for Unmanned Vehicle Systems International. Senior host Brianne Cross will be away for a number of weeks on special projects and will return when complete. Until then, on to the news. A patent granted to Amazon could someday lead to a drone landing on top of an electric car and transferring power to the vehicle while it is underway. The patent drawing shows a docking station attached to the roof of an electric vehicle in a tree for some unknown reason. If the driver of the EV felt he or she could not make it to the next charging station, the drone would meet the car at a predetermined location, scan to be sure it's the correct vehicle, then land and plug in. The car could then proceed to the next charging location while being charged by the drone. Amazon applied for the patent for the systems, devices, and methods delivering energy using an uncrewed autonomous vehicle in 2014, according to a report from the website GovTech.com. Whether the company actually intends to develop such a system or the patent is mainly to prevent a competitor from doing so is unclear at this time. In today's Unmanned Minute, let's take a brief look at a few of the shorter stories that are making the rounds of the unmanned vehicle communities. Yamaha Motor Company has exhibited the YMR-01, a prototype industrial multi-rotor drone-type aircraft scheduled for launch in 2018 at the 4th Next Generation Agriculture Expo Tokyo held at the Makuhari Messi in Chiba October 11th to 13th. The YMR-01's design features coaxial rotors and a lightweight carbon body to enable continuous spraying of one hectare per flight, delivering a spraying quality comparable to Yamaha Motors' industrial use unmanned helicopters. Drone Aviation has announced that it has received an order for its recently upgraded multi-mission capable tactical winch aerostat small platform from an existing DoD customer. The soldier-operated WASP features support for advanced ISR equipment, including the simultaneous use of communications and daylight and thermal payloads. Under terms of the contract valued in excess of $800,000, the company expects to supply the WASP during the fourth quarter of 2017. The Los Angeles Board of Police Commissioners has approved a one-year pilot program setting guidelines for the use of small UAS by LAPD. The Los Angeles Chief of Police recently sent a letter to the city's Board of Police Commissioners urging the adoption of a one-year pilot program for the utilization of small unmanned aerial system. During limited tactical situations, response to natural disasters, or search and rescue operations. Alphabet is testing drone delivery of medical supplies and burritos along with other items in rural southeastern Australia. James Ryan Burgess, co-lead of Alphabet's Project Wing, said the testing has been taking place over the past several weeks in a rural community. The testing is being conducted with families living in a community that is a 40-minute round trip by car for almost anything. They desire delivery of medicine, meals, staples, and other supplies to their homes. Firefighting efforts in California's Santa Cruz Mountains were halted for a few hours last Wednesday after a drone was sighted being flown in an area where firefighting aircraft were also operating. The incident occurred in the vicinity of the Bear Fire in Boulder Creek, California. Flights were halted about 10.30 a.m. local time after the drone was spotted. Authorities grounded all manned aircraft flying in the area until it was determined that the drone was no longer in the air. Operations resumed about noon. Now back to the news. 
there may soon be some movement on the drone regulatory front as the White House is reportedly considering pilot programs that would link FAA rules with drone regulations passed by local and state governments. The White House Office of Science and Technology Policy has devised the programs that would test advances in technology and experiment with oversight with the goal of expanding uses for UAVs nationwide. Insiders familiar with the plan say that it would continue to give the FAA the authority to regulate drone flights between 200 and 400 feet in altitude, while ceding control of flights below 200 feet to local authorities. Currently, the FAA controls airspace down to ground level. There may be as many as 10 distinct models tested across the U.S., though that number is reportedly not set in stone. The altitude distinctions could also change. Also under development are engineering and operational standards for drones, but those are not expected to be released until at least 2020. Skyward has been approved to give commercial drone operators instant access to controlled airspace with the Low Altitude Authorization and Notification Capability Services from the FAA. The program will roll out this fall at Cincinnati International Airport, Reno, San Jose, and Lincoln, among others. LAANC will enable businesses to access airspace that previously required the submission of manual requests for authorization and it will automate the approval process, reducing the wait time from months to seconds. Though the release of Part 107 significantly lowered the barrier to entry for companies that want to operate drones commercially, the rule also created an operational hurdle for companies in urban areas, especially for early adopters who had previously coordinated directly with local air traffic control. Operators have had to wait 60 to 90 days to receive authorization under the existing system. Now, with Skyward and LAANC, enterprises can get approval to fly in just two clicks. With this hurdle gone, we can expect to see substantial adoption of drone technology at the enterprise level, said Mariah Scott, co-president of Skyward. As one of 12 members of the LAANC working group, Skyward helped to develop this capability as an essential method to help serve more customers in new areas efficiently and safely. Well, that's our program for this week. AUVSI's Airborne Unmanned is presented weekly in cooperation with the Association for Unmanned Vehicle Systems International. And in addition to this program, our Airborne Unlimited episodes covering the entire aviation and aerospace world are streamed Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. If you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe and do check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. And more information on the innovative world of all things unmanned at www.aevsi.org and airborne-unmanned.net. See you next week.